Welcome back. This is the 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300 4MATIC, and it is an excellent entry-level luxury sedan straight from Germany, and it's incredible. Major kudos to Mercedes-Benz for redesigning the C-Class just with class. This thing looks good. It looks sharp. I love the proportions. I love how it drives. I love the comfort. I especially love the interior. It's so great. And today I'm going to show you around. We'll go around the exterior, show you it's just nice, clean, simple, beautiful design. We'll show you the interior, which is very impressive. I mean, among the segment, this has by far the most interesting and comfortable interior out there right now. And we'll go for a drive i'll tell you some things that i loved and only very minor things that i think that could be improved but overall i truly think that mercedes has knocked the new c-class just out of the park if you're looking for just a luxurious sporty sedan and yes it is sporty with its turbocharged four-cylinder engine i was apprehensive but it's very good if that's what you're looking for i think you're going to be really really happy with the new c-class so Let's check it out. So let's take a look around. I turned it on for you so you could see these awesome daytime running LED lights. I think they look so good. This front end, it continues just to look more and more AMG-ish, and that's a great thing. Uh, you might be able to hear the engine a little bit. It sounds almost diesel-like out here, but inside it doesn't sound like that, so don't get too worried. You have these awesome Mercedes-Benz insignia there on part of the daytime running light. Just awesome stuff. I'm not a huge fan of the five-spoke 19-inch wheels, but uh, I think that they do look pretty good. And overall, the, like, the proportions are awesome, I think. Mercedes has called this like their cab back design where the, you know, the, the cab <laughs> is set back further, giving you like a longer hood and just kind of a sleek, some sleek proportions that I just, I love. And I spent a good amount of time with the S580 a few months ago, and I adored that car. I think it's worth every dollar. And this has very strong s-class vibes to it it really just does look like a baby s-class in a lot of ways and uh while i still would prefer an s-class and i think it's just amazing if you can make that happen financially if you can't you are not going to be disappointed with this c-class it's just it's beautiful guys and it drives amazing so here's another look in the shade and as you can see, it's just beautiful. I love the proportions. I love the clean, simple design. It just comes together really well. And uh, just, I love it. I really, really like it. Mercedes, everything, in my opinion, that Mercedes is doing right now, is really interesting and really well executed and it just looks great so coming into the interior you don't have the pop-out handles like you do on the s-class but i mean this is a c-class it's half the class half the price of an s-class so that's to be expected but the door has a really nice weight to it and just at first glance you can tell this is a special interior. Just wow. Looks incredible. Mercedes really has continued on a lot of their styling elements that have trickled down to the C-Class here. And that includes a lot of these nice floating pieces. Uh, the handle here, all of your seat controls. Um, even this armrest gives the appearance of being floating and it looks great. I just love the style. You have this amazing Burmeister stereo. Sounds so good. It's an extra option. I'll show you the window sticker here just in a second. And I don't know if you can really tell because it's not very dark, but you do have this $250 ambient lighting package and it gives you ambient lighting everywhere. <laughs> and I think it's 
well worth that 250 bucks. At night, this thing looks amazing. Just incredible. So, starting it up, you just have the key in, press this button, and you also have this humongous center screen. The M-Buck system is phenomenal. I was pretty hesitant about it, but it works great. It's easy to get used to. I do wish, you know, there were more buttons. You do have some down here. You can go through the different driving modes, sport, individual, go back. You've got comfort and eco. I usually keep it in eco or sport and sport really does liven this thing up. I mean, this turbo four cylinder makes just over 250 horsepower and about 300 pound feet of torque. And uh, it gets up and dances. It's a lot of fun. You can see the ambient lighting a little better there, even in the air vents here. I mean, just the attention to detail and the build quality is phenomenal. Now, if you're distracted by the pinstripe suit, <laughs> you uh, don't stress. This is an option. You don't have to get the pinstripes, okay? Um, I think they look good. I think they actually looked better when it was glossy black here, uh, like it had in the S-Class uh, that I drove. But I do think it looks pretty nice. This looks just so interesting. I mean, the steering wheel, the attention detail, the metal, the materials, um, you get a lot of S-Class vibes in here and features uh, without the price. I mean, this is half the price of an S-Class. And so if you don't want the heft, you know, or the cost or whatever of an S-Class, then you should be pretty darn happy with this C-Class. Couple other quick features. You have wireless charger down there, which you can see is also illuminated, which is very cool. Your two cup holders here, which have these nice adjusters to hold in your water bottle better. Uh, you can defeat the auto start stop. Um, you can swipe through here and change the sub menu. But then you can also press this and scroll through different main digital cluster menus, for example. I kind of like it just on the classic. Pretty cool, right? As far as these seats go, they are in typical Mercedes-Benz fashion, highly customizable and very, very comfortable. I love these things. I could spend all day in these seats. It's rare to spend time in seats these days that are actually soft and cushy. Really like them a lot. And uh, my only complaint though, is that for $57,000, they're not ventilated. And uh, man, I wish that they were, because on these hot days, even though it's perforated, and it does a pretty good job of keeping you cool, um, ventilation would be amazing. There's, there's that ambient lighting again, I just, Love it so much. As far as back seat goes, you've got a decent amount of room. It is slightly tighter in here than I was expecting. There's probably about the same amount of room in the back as my my own Mazda 3 Turbo, maybe slightly more. Um, so not a lot, but you can fit two adults back here fine. Probably don't want to spend all day back here, but at least you do have these nice vents and uh, with the door closed, I mean, it's good. You also have these dual panoramic sunroofs, which I can show you right now. If you just go up here and this button, you just slide, brings that one back and that one forward. There's more of that awesome ambient lighting. Now, one thing that I didn't love about the interior, and I'm really just nitpicking here is these, Armrests in the S-Class, they're huge. I mean, you're like in a Lazy Boy recliner. These are just a couple inches. And for someone with pointy elbows, my arm is barely on there. And I, I'm, I'm nitpicking. They're still comfortable, but it's, it's not much to rest your arm on. The belt line, though, is perfect. You can rest your arm up there, no problem. It's comfortable. Heads-up display looks great. You do have this weird kind of... <laughs> bin almost where it goes down for the heads-up display but uh, i don't mind it i know some people kind of complain about it but 
I just think it's a beautiful interior, guys. Well done, Mercedes. I'm gonna try to wrap up some of my initial driving impressions or my driving impressions after having this for a few days. I've been able to put about 100 miles on it, so not a ton, not as many as I usually put on these cars, but um, I think I've driven it enough and in enough circumstances to kind of give you a pretty good idea of what it's like. In general, I love this car. Like, I love it. And I loved the S-Class. I, I, again, I think that Mercedes is just doing really great things with all of their lineup right now. And uh, while this may not be like the most sporty, you know, smaller, more compact luxury sedan that you can buy, it's pretty sporty. Like, let's put this into sport mode here and uh, just let you hear this for just a second. Turn onto this road and... Woo, yeah! <laughs> that, that's great. I mean, almost 300 pound-feet of torque is nothing to uh, feel bad about. The awesome thing about this too is that it returns really great fuel economy. Um, in my time of driving, I've been averaging about 28 or 29 combined, and it's rated for about 27, so slightly better than, uh, than the estimated, you know, rating. So you can have a lot of fun, it's economical, and if you're just looking to, you know, get in a car and just cruise after work and just feel calm, this isn't don't mis misunderstand me this doesn't have the same ride quality as an s-class and it shouldn't for the price but uh it is still very good i almost if i were to buy this car i would probably trade down to 18 inch wheels and get something with a thicker sidewall in some in some road surfaces the the ride can be surprisingly uh, it's not stiff, but stiffer than you'd maybe expect it to be. But on the freeway and on most roads, it's really, really good. But like even right now, I'm on a, I'm on a rougher road on purpose, and it's just a little, it's just a little more like kind of jittery than than maybe you're expecting. And so I, that might honestly be in part due to the larger wheels that are on here and the low profile tires. So I, if it were me, I might, you know, try to trade down to like maybe some 18 inch wheels or something and get something with a more, you know, thicker sidewall that could, that could alleviate some of that. But I'm really nitpicking. This is so good. Like, and it's fun too. I mean, you put your foot down and we, <laughs> You don't have to be going fast to just really enjoy this car. And I think it, like I said, it really shines just, um, just cruising around. And uh, if you can't have an S-Class, which I think everybody should have that experience at least once, it's, it's phenomenal. It's worth every dollar. But if you can't afford an S-Class, you don't want an S-Class, like I said earlier, uh, you're not going to be disappointed here. I mean, this, it, it feels, I mean, the best way to put it is the, is the way I think a motor trender car and driver said, and they said, you know, it's just a baby S class and it is in most senses of what that could mean. It's not quite as powerful. It's not as big. It's not quite as lux luxurious, but the essence of it is there, which is very cool because the S class, the new S class is superb especially for the price. I mean, I think it competes with, you know, the Bentley Flying Spur, which is at least, you know, 80, 100 grand or more expensive than the S580. So to have the essence of the S-Class and a lot of the features that it has here at a $57,000 uh, compact luxury sedan is pretty cool. One of my really only minor complaints about this uh, C-Class is that the brake pedal has a really interesting feel to it. It has uh, a softer and more squishy brake pedal than I think I've felt in really any other car recently. Uh, it's it's kind of surprising. Like again, once you get used to it, it's like, okay, whatever. But but at least when you're initially driving this around, getting used to it, it's, it, 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 you, you, you press it down a, a good couple inches and not a lot happens. 
it feels like even like two or three or maybe even four inches until it really starts to to bite and then it bites a lot and uh and so it's just something to get used to. I definitely don't think it's a deal breaker, but it's, it's just an interesting little quirk of this car that has such a squishy brake pedal. Going up this hill, yeah, woo! I mean, it's not, not any, uh, you know, V8, but it doesn't have the sound of it. It is kind of unusual to be driving a Mercedes. I'm used to Mercedes with V8s and uh, it is kind of unusual to be driving one and be hearing the sound of a four-cylinder under the under the hood, but it does a great job. I, I think it's a, a great engine. Okay, so some final thoughts on the Mercedes-Benz C300. Let me just pull out the window sticker here. This tops out, or our tester, I guess, tops out at 57,150. This is the pinnacle trim, so it comes with all the good stuff has summer performance tires, your 19 inch wheels, panorama sunroof. These are all extra options. Uh, illuminated door sills, acoustic glass, which is 150 bucks. I think that's totally worth it. The uh, enhanced ambient lighting, 250, absolutely worth it. The wireless charging, eh, it works pretty well. It's 200 bucks, you kind of take it or leave it. You've got your digital light package with headlamps uh, with projection function, absolutely worth it. You've got your multimedia package, the sound package, this Burmester 3D surround system, 650 bucks. And it sounds amazing. If I had better microphones, I'd show it to you, but it's just, it's worth the 650. You got your driver assistance package, which you can kind of decide if that's something you want. Uh, I do think that Mercedes Benz, as far as their driver's assistance uh, technologies go, I think that they are probably one of the best ones out there doing it. And so if you're interested at all in having you know, uh, well, let me just read you the list here. Active distance assist, act, uh, uh, distronic active steering assist, active lane change assist, active lane keeping. It's 1950, but if you're interested in it at all, I do think that they do it better than probably anybody else, at least that I've experienced so far. So I would recommend that. And this also has uh, your, you know, a parking feature, which I haven't been able to test yet, which can help you park. And that's 950 bucks. So take that or leave it for what you want. But 57 grand, I think that's a pretty great deal, honestly. I think that that's a great bargain. I think you're getting something that's fun. I think you're getting something where the engineers have obviously thought through it all, where the interior is by far the most interesting thing, to, uh, interesting interior in the segment to look at and to experience. I just wish the seats were ventilated. Um, I think you're getting something that looks great. I think the design is timeless. I think this is going to be something that looks good now and looks good 10, 15 years from now. I do have some concerns about some of the buttons. I wish there was more buttons and less touch sensitive buttons, like especially here on the steering wheel. I'm not a huge fan of those. I do wonder about their longevity, but for now, I think that this is very well executed. And I think if you're in the market for something like this, a more compact luxury sedan, uh, you're going to be really thrilled with the new C300. So I've talked way too long. I could talk longer. I really enjoyed this car, but huge thank you to Mercedes Benz. If you're in the market at all for one of these cars, go check them out on KSL Cars. And if you do kslcars.com, hit the search button. You'll pull up dozens and dozens and dozens of C-class, um, Mercedes C-classes on there. And, uh, but thank you guys, please subscribe. I definitely would recommend it. There's more great stuff coming. There's always cool cars and, uh, hope that this helps you out if you're in the market, uh, and you haven't really given the C-Class much consideration in the last few years. I definitely think you should. So thanks. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.